Hi everyone, this is Adam Virgil, and this is the first of a series of videos where we're going to start creating historical data reporting for an athlete that we pick, or in other words, seeing their data over time in different ways. Now, you may be coming from a couple of different places. What you will need to effectively participate in this tutorial is you will need this player card, or you will have to have had to have created a player card using the videos in prior or prior videos that that I've uh, released in this series. And what this series is, for those of you that don't know, it's we're creating an infrastructure where we can merge testing data with monitoring data with exercise programs. We're building a framework that that will allow us to do all of those things, both from a data collection and a data reporting and interpretation standpoint. In the last series of videos, or the first series of videos, we created a player card. That's the first series. The second series, and the more comprehensive series, is we use that player card and other things to create a report for the athlete for a specific testing event and compare them to their peers. Now, in this series of videos, we're going to create historical data reporting for the athlete that we pick. In other videos, we'll do team and athlete monitoring stuff like with GPS metrics and heart rate metrics and we'll also create program templates and integrate this athlete's testing data into program templates such as their 1RMs and so on and so forth. So we're going to kind of build this thing out in a series of stages and you are fine to participate in whichever stages are relevant to you. The only thing that you need is to have this player card built. So as long as you have that, you're okay for these videos. And now let's get started. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an area for this information to live. And this is a lot of personal preference for me. And because I've already gone through this fitness testing report creation thing, I want this to live on the same report. So I want it to live underneath, right here. I want the historical data underneath so that I can contextualize what has gone on within this fitness testing session with this athlete's historical data. Now, you may not have done this, and if that's the case, and you may not want to do this. And if that's the case, you can just use your player card and create a space next to it or beneath it. And you'll see what I mean in a second as we start building out parts. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to copy what we have here, this performance facil facilitators and defenders box, and paste it beneath. And we're going to call this historical, I'm just going to call it historical data for now. It's just to create another section of information, if you will. And we're going to add some key pieces of information that we're going to want to interact with first. And then we'll use those interactions with our data. And for me, I know that I'm going to have this data and I'm going to want to pick a date range that I want to look at it within. And I'm also going to want to pick the session types that I want to include. So if we go back to our testing data here, and if you watch, you need to watch the original videos to qualify to do this. So you should be familiar with this data set. So I might only want to display data for a specific season phase and how that tracks over time. And like I said, between uh, certain dates that I care about. And that's important because I want to, again, contextualize this since if it's your first time um, in this series where this is built for like more of a pro team environment, but we could easily have, instead of position team, it might be position sport. So the athlete is a basketball player or a soccer player if you're at a high school or whatnot. And the season phase might be fall or spring if they participate in multiple sports. You might wanna see an athlete's progress from fall to fall or spring to spring or whatever the case might be. So by having a season phase or whatever this is as something that you can interact with, it might give you uh, an easy way to look at the data that you're looking for in a dynamic way. Anyways, let's go back to our testing dashboard. And I'm just going to set up an area to do this. So I'm going to merge these two cells right here, and I'll call this date, date range. And this will be date one, two. Date two, I'm just clicking the tab button to move over. These are just placeholders for, we'll want 
the first date to go in there and the second date to go in there. I'm going to want whatever's beneath the filter between those two dates. And then we might do, mark, might merge these two and say include, or maybe we don't merge those two. Maybe we just say include and merge these two. I'll call this training camp. And we'll skip one and then merge these two. And I'll call this in season. And what we'll put in here, so let's select cell J41 or next to the, where it says training camp. And the cell, hold down the control key for me. It might be the command key for you if you're on a Mac. Select the cell next to in season. And we'll go to insert checkbox. Now what we just did is what we're going to want to do is we're going to toggle these checkboxes on and off to include these in our, in our data or not essentially. And we can format this to, to look a little bit differently. And why don't we actually put in some real dates now? So I'm going to look in our testing data, 10, 17, 2019. You'll have your own dates in your data, let's say 12, 5, 2019. So I'm going to put date one as 10, 15, 2019, and this as 12, 30, 2019, so that we have a date range to work with. Now we have something set up where we could potentially manipulate our data if we interact with these items once we set up the appropriate formulas to do that. So now let's just make this look uh, presentable or kind of nice. So I'm just going to select all the stuff we have here. We'll center align it horizontally, center align it vertically, and maybe we'll just fold these two things and fold these two things and make them kind of color coded maybe we can we'll put all this in some some light uh maybe we'll put all this in some light gray put all this in some light gray and maybe we'll make the things that we change which are these two things we'll make them gold and we'll make these two boxes also um gold i guess and what we can do is maybe let's just Let's just fold everything, why not? And we'll put little boxes around them. So highlight them all. Put a little border around it for now. I don't like that strong of a border color, so maybe it's like this color. And the thickness is a little bit bigger. And we'll do the same here. And there we go. Okay, that's really all that I wanted to do in this video. I really wanted to give you an opportunity here to post a comment below and let me know i'm going to stick on this page for a second if there are things that you want to manipulate in your data set or there are things that i'm not covering here because now you know the plan the plan is to create some sort of ch some charts and maybe a table that we can control the dates with and we can select what we want to see for the athlete that we select up here and if there's anything else that you might want to control the data by that you have in your data set let me know and I'll do my best to get a couple of videos out there that show you how to accommodate for those things as well. Also in this in the description of this video I will post a a file that you can copy or download that will have these testing data templates for for you to use. So you can take a look at it, think about it and if you have a comment or you would like something to be covered once you kind of make it your own Again, post the comment below. I'll, I'll give it a look. I'll do everything that I can to make it work for you. And make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you find the content valuable. I really appreciate that. Let the YouTube algorithms know that this is something that's important to at least a couple of people. And yeah, uh, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.